Nobody likes making mistakes because mistakes aren't fun. And on eBay, if you make a mistake, it can not only cost you time, but it can cost you money as well. What's up guys, my name is Justin and I go by Coach Commerce here on YouTube. And here on my channel, I love making videos to try to help other eBay sellers get better at selling on eBay. And most of the time, I like to keep things positive here on my channel. But today I thought I'd talk about 10 different mistakes that I have made on eBay that have you know, been pretty costly in hopes of maybe helping other people so they don't make the same mistakes. So what I'll try to do today is I'll try to go through this list you know, one at a time, starting off with the least or the most minor eBay mistakes, and I'll work my way all the way up to the top, you know, most expensive mistakes or the mistakes that can get your account actually blocked or terminated on eBay. So enough small talk, let's go ahead now and jump right into the top 10 mistakes that eBay sellers make. Okay, eBay mistake number one is running an auction when it's not necessary. Now most people when they get started on eBay, they think of eBay as being an auction website and rightfully so because you know that's how eBay began. But nowadays, really where the money is on eBay is sending your listing as what's called buy it now or good till canceled. And when you do that, you're basically putting a price on your item just like it would have at a regular store, you know, like Walmart or Target. Um, but what's gonna happen is when you put that price on it, a buyer will come in and they'll buy that item instantly. You don't have to you know, wait seven days for an auction to end and you're gonna get paid right away. Now the biggest advantage of selling your item as buy it now versus running it as an auction is when it sells, you're gonna get exactly the price that you were hoping for. Whereas with an auction, you know, auctions typically run from three to 10 days. And during that window, if you don't have a lot of interest on your item and you don't get a lot of bids, your item can actually sell for less than what it's really worth. So if you're running a lot of auctions and you're not really using the buy it now function, I would highly encourage you to do so. Now I can already hear people down in the comment section below saying, you know, auctions have a valid purpose and there are times when you should use them. And that's definitely true. You know, if you have a collectible item or something that's rare that has a large interest in, you know, a large amount of buyers and there's a limited quantity of them, you definitely want to run that at an auction because you have the chance of getting that bidding war, right? But if I have, you know, a common item like this phone right here, um, there's not gonna be a bidding war on an iPhone. So this is the type of item where I wanna list it, buy it now, good till canceled, and wait for it to sell. Because if I were to put it up at auction, chances are I'm not gonna make the money that I could make if I were to list it as buy it now. Okay, moving on to the next most common eBay mistake, and that is not knowing how to properly ship your items. Now, when a lot of people start off on eBay, the shipping portion of eBay is honestly the most overwhelming. You know, anybody can go on eBay and take photos and throw up a draft and, and create a listing, but when it comes to shipping, there's something that's overwhelming about shipping. You know, you've got a lot of postal carriers, there's UPS, USPS, FedEx, and then with all of those carriers, there are a ton of options. And all of that information kind of gives people data overload and they end up making a lot of mistakes on eBay with their shipping that really they didn't need to do. And when people come to me and ask me, you know, Justin, how do I make sure that I'm not making mistakes with shipping? What I always tell them is to always use calculated shipping and never use the flat rate shipping option. And the reason being is if you're using calculated shipping and you're adding in your weight of your package and the box size, basically the info that you give to eBay is going to be accurate no matter where you're shipping to. You could ship to Florida, to Alaska, to Hawaii, to California, anywhere in the country, and basically the rate is gonna calculate automatically and charge your customer exactly what they need to be charged so you don't end up overpaying or underpaying when it comes to actually shipping your item. And the best way that you can make sure you're using calculated shipping correctly is to make sure that you have a tape measure and a real good shipping scale. Now, if you don't have a good shipping scale, I would really encourage you to purchase one because a good, accurate shipping scale is going to actually save you money by helping you avoid making common shipping mistakes. And I'll drop a link down in the description field down below to the scale that I personally use. I love this scale because it weighs light stuff really accurately, which can help you save on first class shipping. And it can also take really heavy loads as well, you know, items that are bigger and bulkier. So it's a really good all around, all purpose scale. Another mistake that a lot of eBay sellers make is that they don't offer an international shipping option to their eBay listings. Now, when it comes to international shipping, a lot of people think that international shipping is really difficult and rightfully so. Um, typically with international shipping, there's customs paperwork. You have to make sure that you're selecting the right, you know, international mail carriers and the list goes on and on. But eBay actually has a program that makes international shipping a breeze and they call it the global shipping program. Now, when you make an international sale with the global shipping program, 
basically what happens is when you make that sale, eBay then has you send that package to them and they fulfill the order and handle all of the international customs paperwork and all of the international shipping for you. And this program is really great because it takes all of the legwork and all of the guesswork out of international shipping. And the other great thing is if that package makes it to the global shipping headquarters and eBay gets it in their hands, after that, if anything goes wrong with that package, you're not held liable or accountable anymore. And if you're familiar with international shipping, that's huge because international shipping in a lot of countries really isn't that great. And typically with regular international shipping, if you were to do it yourself, if something goes wrong and that package doesn't make it, you're out your item and you'll have to refund your customer. Whereas with the global shipping program, if eBay you know, gets it in their hands and something goes wrong after that, it's not your fault anymore and eBay will reimburse you for anything that goes wrong. So when it comes to international shipping, I would highly recommend using the global shipping program and not trying to do international shipping on your own. And if you're not already using this program, definitely go ahead and activate it on all of your listings right away so you can make those sales. Okay, this next eBay mistake is one that's actually really avoidable, and that is to make sure that you're describing your items properly. Now, if you're an eBay reseller like myself and you're buying a lot of items that you know are used or pre-owned, Make sure whatever you're selling, that you're really being accurate in how you're describing it. For example, if you bought a t-shirt like this, make sure that you're really looking at it at all of the seams, looking for holes and stains, because if you miss any imperfection and you inaccurately describe your item, what's gonna happen is your customer is gonna get it, you know, they're gonna notice the flaw, they're gonna go back to your listing and you know, they didn't see it because you didn't put that flaw in there, and what they're gonna do is they're gonna open up a return or they're gonna leave you negative feedback. And something like that would really be unfortunate because you know if you're being careful and you're listing accurately, you can avoid that mistake before it even becomes one. Oh, and while we're on the same topic, if you are clicking sell similar on eBay, be careful doing that because a lot of times when you're selling a similar item to one that already sold on eBay or one that's actually active on eBay, what eBay does is they pull all of the data from that listing and even though it's a, you know really similar to yours, there may be subtle differences to where if you don't go in and actually change those item description fields, it's gonna keep the item description from you know, the listing that you copied essentially. And if you don't change them, of course, you know, what'll happen again is your customer will get the item, notice it's different, and it could you know, result into a customer issue. So when you're creating listings on eBay, make sure to really take your time and make sure you get that description and those item specifics exactly how you want them. Another mistake that eBay sellers make from time to time is that they accidentally oversell an item that they have in their inventory. Now this mistake typically happens when you have a multiple quantity item in your eBay store, you know, an item that has a quantity of two or more. And what happens is you have a customer that comes in and buys this product, but you had the quantity entered incorrectly. And this can happen by accident when you create a listing. Um, maybe you make a keystroke error and type in the wrong number. Or another way that it can happen is if you have, you know, a bunch of them in your inventory and one of them falls off the shelf and breaks. And now what used to be eight now is seven and you don't go back in and change the quantity. And then when that item sells out, now you have an order that you can't fulfill because you no longer have that product. So the big takeaway here, of course, is to make sure that you're always taking good product inventory of all of your items that you have in your eBay store to make sure that you don't accidentally oversell an item that you're promising to your customer. Because anytime you have to cancel a sale on eBay, not only is it bad for your eBay account, but it can also result in negative feedback and you know basically a bad customer service experience to where you know if a customer is buying that product and they don't get it, chances are they're not gonna become a repeat customer or ever buy anything from your store again. So really make sure you're taking your time, that you're listing your item correctly with the right amount, and if you ever have anything break in your store or if anything ever gets lost, make sure that you go back into your eBay store and update the quantity. The next mistake that a lot of eBay sellers make is offering poor customer service. And this can happen in one of two ways. The first way is offering poor service to your customers before the sale happens. For example, um, when a seller contacts you through eBay and they're asking you questions about an item, maybe they have a question about the item's condition or a size question or you know a question about you know shipping, take the time to contact your customer and reply to them back their messages. Even if they're being impatient or ungrateful, you can sometimes turn a bad customer experience into a good one make the sale and then have a happy customer that may end up being a repeat customer as well. So never ignore or avoid eBay messages simply because you don't feel like it. And then secondly, and maybe even more importantly, never avoid or give bad customer service after the sale actually happens. If you have a customer that contacts you through eBay messages after you've already sold them their item and they've gotten it and they have a problem or you know maybe they need to return that item, don't ignore that or avoid it. 
Because if you do, it's only gonna cause you more problems and it may end up actually costing you money. Now, of course, no eBay seller likes problems after the sale, but a lot of times if you respond to them quickly, you can avoid even having to take a return. But if a return is inevitable, um, whatever you do, don't avoid that return and definitely make sure that you accept it so that you get your product back. If you try to decline a return or you know flat out refuse to even respond to that return notification, what will happen is eventually eBay will step in and side with the buyer in the eBay case or that eBay return. They'll come into your account, pull out your money, and then the buyer gets to keep the return or the item that they were going to return and you're out of your item too. So if you have a buyer that's wanting to return an item, my best suggestion is make sure to go ahead and approve that return so you get your item back and then you know you can refund them their money and then after you've got your item back, all you have to do is relist it on eBay and sell it again. And remember, if you have a bad experience with a buyer, you can always go back in and block that buyer so they can't purchase anything from your store again. But the main takeaway here is you always wanna be professional, you always wanna provide good customer service, and you always wanna do the right thing on your end as a seller. Okay, this next eBay mistake is one that I personally hate. It is my least favorite mistake to make on eBay, and that is when you accidentally send a package to the wrong customer. Now typically when you make this mistake on eBay, it doesn't happen with one package, but it happens with two. And this mistake often happens when you're shipping multiple items and you have a lot of orders, and you're not paying very careful attention and you take two different labels and you put them on the wrong box and ship them to the wrong customers. Now typically when this happens, it's the worst because you don't catch it until you have a customer message you saying, hey, you know, I got your package and the wrong item was inside. And then you know that this other customer is waiting to get theirs with the wrong item inside that should have been the other customers. And when this happens, of course, you can imagine the customer's upset. They're probably gonna leave you negative feedback and you're already out money because you've had to ship the item three times to the customer, back to you, and then back to the customer. So this is something that you definitely don't wanna have happen to you. It's not fun, it's a huge pain. And the best way that I can tell you to avoid doing this is to make sure that you're really taking your time and being careful when you're shipping your items and when you're mailing your packages on eBay. Moving on to category number eight, and this mistake happens when you have a customer that asks you to combine items, and then you ship those items to them and they claim that you only sent one. Now this mistake is kind of a scam on eBay, and if you're not aware of how it works, basically that's exactly what happens. When you ship two items together that weren't two separate listings and you didn't combine them in your shipping hub, and you actually put them together and they only have one tracking number and one transaction, if a buyer claims that that item didn't get to them, eBay is gonna take your money out of your account and give it back to their customer. So even when you're not combining orders in your shipping items, always make sure that you're adding tracking numbers. Don't just mark your item as shipped because if a buyer claims that they didn't get their package, you have nothing to go back upon and eBay is always gonna refund your customer and you're gonna be out your item as well. Okay, eBay mistake number nine is drop shipping. Now, if you're not familiar with what drop shipping is, basically you're selling an item that you don't physically have in your possession. You see what drop shipping is, is you find a person that's a supplier, maybe somebody in China, that has a lot of one item, and you list that item like you have it in your possession, but you really don't, and then your buyer on eBay comes along, buys it from you, who's basically the middleman, you then have to go to your supplier, and then you ship it directly from your supplier to that customer. And while that seems like a great idea, what ends up happening is your supplier runs out or all of a sudden they're unable to get their product anymore and you're stuck without being able to fulfill an order. Now we can already hear a lot of people down in the comment section below saying that drop shipping is great and that they make a lot of money on eBay doing drop shipping. But in my opinion, um, that's very, very rare. And in all actuality, eBay does not like drop shippers. People that drop ship on eBay um, typically have a high cancellation rate and a lot of negative feedback because they end up with a lot of orders that they cannot fulfill. And when that happens, what ends up happening is, you know, their account gets blocked, restricted, and even terminated on eBay. And if you get your account terminated on eBay, um, eBay can actually ban you from their platform with an IP ban or an internet provider ban to where you can no longer open an account from your internet address at your house, period, forever. And that's something that you really don't want because I know literally no one that's ever been able to reverse an IP ban on eBay. And if I can offer any advice, I would say stay away from drop shipping. You know, I know there's a lot of appeal with not having to pay for inventory up front and you know, only getting it directly from your supplier as soon as an order is made. But there's just so much with drop shipping that can go wrong and it's not worth risking your eBay account in the process trying to do this on eBay. 
Okay, we've made it to the final mistake that you can make on eBay, and in my opinion, this is the biggest one you can actually make, and that is to sell Vero items on eBay. Now, if you're not familiar with what a Vero is on eBay, basically Vero stands for Verified Rights Owner, and it's a program for anybody that has a patent or a copyright on a specific product that basically bans or limits other sellers on eBay from selling that product. And you'll typically find really high-end luxury brands in the Vero program, you know, brands like Chanel and Gucci and Louis Vuitton and, you know, Rolex. Those brands that are extremely high-end are oftentimes really faked and people go to eBay to sell fake products and these companies don't like that because it dilutes their brand and it really brings down their name and their reputation. So what these companies do is they enroll in this Vero program and if they catch you selling their products or their items or any item that looks like their item, they'll send you a cease and desist letter through eBay. That eBay listing will get pulled down and you'll get a ding on your eBay account. And even more, if you then go and try to relist that item or sell another item like that that's on that list, what can end up happening is you can actually get your eBay account terminated and those companies will literally come after you and try to sue you. And if you don't believe me, I know quite a few resellers that have gotten cease and desist letters from attorneys because um, you know they were selling items in the Vero program and they didn't know that they were actually in that program. So my best advice is to go to Google and you know just Google the eBay Vero program and pull up all of the companies that participate in that program and kind of study it and learn it and, and kind of focus on what companies really don't like their products being sold on eBay. And like I was saying, they generally are really high-end luxury brands, but there are a couple companies on there that might surprise you that you would think wouldn't be on there. So take the time to really learn which companies and products you're not allowed to sell on eBay. So there you have it guys, that's my list of 10 common mistakes that eBay sellers make. Um, by no means is this list conclusive or all encompassing. So if you have a mistake that you wanna share with other resellers, um, feel free to drop it down in the comment section below. Or if you have a question for me, go ahead and leave a comment and I promise I'll do my best to try to get back to you and help you in any way that I can. And if you haven't done so already, um, if you could help me out by clicking the thumbs up button down below, what that'll do is it'll help other people find this video on YouTube as well. And hopefully we can make the eBay community a better place. Thank you guys so much for giving me your time today and for watching this video. I hope you don't make any of these mistakes, but if you do, that's okay. You know, learn from your mistakes and hopefully you'll become a better seller because of it. Have a great day, good luck selling on eBay, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye everyone.